I love your content. Like Thank you know you. what I'm saying? Um a lot of the stuff that you're doing is 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 on point. Um I want I want to read some of the some of your posts that you that you posted, okay. and I want you to just kind of expound on them, right? Okay. The first one, which was kind of going hand in hand with what we was talking about right now, was just you know educating the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, and this stood out to me because I was on the teachers about this in the in the middle of the pandemic. Retaining a student in the middle of a pandemic should be out of the question. I refuse to hold back any of my students this year. How can we have the same expectations when circumstances? Are like never before my students are more than a test score mm -hmm. man I used to man I was going mm -hmm. back and forth with these <laughs> these teachers like listen you can't grade this kid on not being at school not logging in and like right. not checking in on it like yeah. we are in a pandemic you know yeah. this, we've never been this is uncharted territory literally literally and so to hold them back and you know a big piece of that was because um a lot of, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of my kids didn't have internet or it was spotty or they don't have a home. I think that's also overlooked. Like they yeah. don't even have a home base. So they're between cousins and aunties and grand. Yep. You know, they don't have a home. And so right. to possibly retain them because they didn't log into your irrelevant class in the grand scheme of things consistently for five days in a row is pathetic and disgusting. Yep. And it's like, what are we really doing here? Yep. Like, you're going to hold a student back because of the cards he was dealt, essentially. Um, you know, we can't punish him for his parents not getting him to school or his parents not logging him on time. You know, it was just a lot of um, a lot of teachers were holding the students so accountable to make all of these adjustments when it's like they're really just in the trenches too, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And they're getting it the worst. Yeah, they're getting it the worst because you don't know how to teach right now. <laughs> were, you able, were you able to have any, like, flexibility with, like, you know, sharing that type of information in, in the charter school since there is a little bit more freedom, just kind of like how y'all able to move and shift parts within the school? Mm -hmm. Were people able to, to, like, retain that information and kind of act on that a little bit more or was it still... Yeah, I would say. I would say the people who I touched at least. Yeah. Um, we were able to have really honest, like, conversations and just dialogue around what was really going on. Um, and, you know, people will be complaining like, you know, this, this person's never on or they're only on for 30 minutes or, you know, I only get them, you know, twice a week for 45 minutes. I'm like, okay, so what you doing when you get them? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what we doing then? Okay. Yeah. So then that means when you do have them, I'm pulling you in a small group and putting them on, you know, some type of, uh, like you just, you have to, you have to meet them where they're at. That's right. That's right. Listen, I want to read another one. Mm -hmm. uh, understanding trauma and its impact on students' learning experience is critical when working in urban settings. Mm -hmm. Break that down. So you, you know, we have to be mindful of what they're coming in with every day. Every day you have to, like, check their pulse before you try to educate them because they're people first. Mm -hmm. And so they have a lot, you know. Like, I have, I can think of three right now who I check in, like, intentionally every single morning um, because they all have had lost a parent, um, you know. And this one in particular is living with a grandparent who also has six other of his cousins and so whose mom got shot in the head when mm. he was at home upstairs with his siblings. Mm. So you have to handle him with different, different gloves, than you would me, per se, if I was in his class, because I didn't go through that traumatic experience. And so there are so many hymns in my building. That's right. Um, and so we have to make sure that we have to educate with that lens. Um, you know, we have to diffuse every all like all any altercation or any type of tension. We need to diffuse that because you know, what people may or may not know is that when you've gone through a lot of trauma, your brain naturally operates in this, like, fight or flight. Yep. Um, you know what I mean? You're in a, you because you got, am I good? Are we good? Am I good? You know, you're constantly, constantly, constantly. And so when you live in that, um, you, while you might be trying to just simply say, go sit down, in his perspective, you just told him to square up. Right. Because right. everything, he's been under attack all week. Right. Now you telling him to sit down, that was right. his final straw. Right. So as opposed to feeling like, oh my gosh, he's overreacting. No, 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 no. Maybe tell yourself, 
I'm not even trying to disrespect you. You just have to sit down because I'm trying to teach. Right. Something as simple as that is right. all they need to know. Right. But it's no having the wherewithal to make those type of statements and not get offended when they kind of come at you in a way that you might not always prefer is vital because, yeah, they're traumatized. And so they have they have a lens on all the time, and that is, are you with me or against me? Yeah. And so you have to constantly remind a child that I'm with you and right. be willing to do that. Right, right. Why do you... Um and you t- you touched on a little bit about this earlier. You know, it became solidified for you. But like, why the content creation around around your work? Like, you know, what I'm saying, why is that? You know, why is that purposeful for you? Like, why is that um, important to you? You know, what I'm saying, mm-hmm. because it's a listen. The work the work that you're doing, the surge providing, is heavy and it's real mm-hmm. and it is trying and it it can easily leave a person with with limited capacity to create. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. why why is that important? Um, you know, like somebody got to do it. <laughs> um, and also because nobody's doing it. You a trailblazer. Yeah, like yeah. Pe- nobody wants to talk about this part of of education. Like people only want to talk about um, you know, the aha moments and the beautiful relationships and yeah, the, yeah, yeah. you know, the basketball games and the, like people don't people don't want to talk about this part. Um, and that's the problem. And I could have been a, I could have been a product of this coming from where I came from. No doubt. 